Week number nine, Dana White's Contender Series. Folks, it's almost over, and that makes me sad, but I'm also happy that we still have next week as well as this week. So don't worry, guys. It's not over yet. Next week will be bittersweet, but we can still enjoy this one knowing we have next week as well. And in this one, first, actually, let's mention this. We went 5-0 and on picks last week, so that's – we did good. We did good. All right, so let's hope we can do it again. Let's bring this one on, you know, bring it on through. Let's finish out these last few weeks and just crush them, right? This one, we have a couple of undefeated heavyweights. We have Mario Pinto, 8-0 on the career. We have Lucas Camacho, he's 6-0 on the career. That's what you like to see. A couple of undefeated heavyweights going at it. Contender Series, UFC needs some heavyweights, so here we go. This is what we're looking at. Now, when we look at their skills, this is going to be interesting because a lot of people are going to tell you that Lucas Camacho is not very good, and I don't agree. But his style is such a way that makes people think he's not very good and that can be misleading so this fight is closer than a lot of people are going to tell you and i think the odds are going to make this one pretty wide it's going to make me nervous looking at the odds but let's break this down so when we look at camacho dude's a pretty good striker even though it might not always look like it the reason he's good is because he has really good forward pressure and really good volume and he mixes that with his pace this guy is hard to get out of your face and that's what makes him good even if he's not throwing these super technical combinations and all that stuff. One thing I don't necessarily like, but can be effective that he does is he'll paw with the lead hand a lot like this. That makes him wide open to counters because you can counter that, that little paw that he does quite a bit, but it also gives him the opportunity to trap his opponent's hand and come in with his own shots. So it is a good thing and a bad thing. I don't particularly like it, but it is something that he has used to, to good effect at points. Um, just not, not for me. Right. Uh, like I said, it does leave him open to be, uh, to be countered, but he's durable. He can take the shots and just keep coming at you. My, my favorite weapon of his is his knees. Uh, whether it's a step-in knee or once he gets to the clinch, those are his best weapon as far as dealing damage as well, and also just closing distance with those knees. I do like that as well. So I do think he is a good striker, although it may not look pretty at times. The knees look very pretty, but it, it, it's not, and it's not like they look bad in the striking. It's just sometimes you think he's a little reckless which I guess he would be reckless. But the way that he just comes forward with a ton of volume and just puts it on people, that is what makes him dangerous in the striking. Now, in the grappling department, he's decent there as well. His takedown defense isn't the best, but he's incredibly hard to hold down, and he can wear guys out just by making them have to take him down a bunch because as soon as he gets back up, the dude's coming at you again. Uh, and he's also very active from the bottom if he does start working from the bottom. He's doing something. Usually trying to get back up, but sometimes it's something else. You know, throwing up a submission, throwing off some, some, uh, you know, strikes from his back, which is not really a good idea, but he's still working to get back up while he's doing it. Now, Pinto, on the other hand, very much, uh, I would say, the opposite style. Um, he's a guy that needs to build as the fight goes on. So he does kind of, I don't want to say he starts slow, because he really doesn't start slow, but he just doesn't, he doesn't start fast, and he does build into a fight. Uh, for Pinto, he's a good striker that'll just poke the jab. He's not throwing a ton of power. He's not throwing like a, he's not, it's not like a, a stiff jab or anything, but he's just poking you with it, right? And it's a lot of to find the range is what it is. It's a lot of just him finding range. Uh, his combos will come at some point in the fight, but he doesn't start throwing combinations until he really finds that range. So it's kind of a negative for the fact that it's a lot of jabs and leg kicks for the first round, round and a half. And then maybe he's going to start throwing some combinations, maybe not even until the third round. And uh, so that could be a problem for him against a guy like Camacho. That's what I'm saying. Camacho's dangerous in that aspect. Uh, but dude's going to poke the jab early. He's got a good leg kick volume, and that's something I like. It's He's just constantly hitting that leg, um, and that causes guys a lot of problems. He can really mess up the leg going into the you know later rounds of a fight. So I do like that. And the thing that I like the most, this dude's like six foot five, but he keeps his hands up. Tall guys usually suck at that. But he keeps his hands up, not like a high, high guard, like, you know, like way up, but he keeps his hands here because he's 6'5". So keeping him up this high is actually a detriment, but he keeps him where he's covering his chin. Tall guys don't often do that. A lot of times you see them down here like this, just doing that lean back. Nah, you don't get that from, from Pinto. He does a good job at keeping his hands up. Every now and then you'll see him relying on head movement most of the time. Hands are up, poking the jab, keeping, keeping defensively responsible. Love that for him. Uh, not only in this matchup, but in every matchup, that's a great skill to have. In the grappling. He's pretty good here as well. He's got decent takedown defense, and he works to get back up if he's taken down. But the thing I do like is if he ends up on top, his control is very good, and that ground and pound is uh, its pretty deadly, right? I think it's a lot of times it's because he's calculated in his ground and pound, and he throws like clean straights right down at his opponent. 
This matchup, like I said, it's tricky because a lot of people are going to tell you Camacho's not very good. I don't agree with that, but I do still think Pinto gets the win. I just think he's going to have some moments in the first round, most likely, where Pinto's going to going to have to really battle through some stuff. But I think he'll get I think he'll get through it. I think we're going to get Pinto. I think he wins a decision here because that's kind of the style that he fights at. And I think Camacho is going to slow in the third a little because he's putting out such a high volume. But I do think Pinto is going to be able to win probably rounds two and three, maybe all three rounds. I just think it's going to be a few moments in the first, maybe even the second, where you're like, oh, man, Pinto might be in trouble. So that's where I'm kind of leaning. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Do you think Camacho is going to win this one with that pressure and volume? Because if he does, I think that's how he gets it done. Uh, but otherwise, I'm on Pinto. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like the video while you're down there. And if you haven't already, check out the rest of the videos in the playlist. It should be popping up on screen if it has not already. And I will see you there.